Um, the next thing we're going to look at is the inventory sales um, entries. And so with this, we want to look at the inventory sales worksheet. You want to go to Blackboard and get that worksheet off of Blackboard so you can work that worksheet along with me um, as I go through this lesson. Um, with sales, we have a little bit different um, items than we did with the inventory purchases because with a sale we have to actually do two different things. We have to one record the sale and the second thing that we have to do is we have to take it out of inventory. So there will be two entries um, when we look at our sales um, journal entries underneath this perpetual inventory system. So remember, we are looking at the perpetual inventory system, not periodic, but we're looking at the perpetual system. So in this one, we actually record that sale. Um, the things that you hopefully notice here is that again, we have terms. If we have terms, again, that means on account. So since we are looking at sales here, um, that would be the accounts receivable account. Uh, what we have sold would be $11,000 worth of inventory. So our journal entry here is going to be for the um, account receivable account because uh, someone owes us this $11,000 now that we've made this sale. And the other side is going to be the sales account, which is a revenue account. And we do increase revenues on that credit side. So we have recorded the sale. The next thing we want to do is take it out of inventory. So this is also a June 1st um, amount. And what we have to look at here is that it is coming out of inventory. So if we are decreasing inventory, inventory is an asset, so that means that is going to be our credit account. Um, so our credit account would be inventory, and the cost that and what we paid for this inventory was $5,000. So that's what we have to take it out of inventory is, is our cost. Now the other accounts that we're going to be using here is a new account. And that new account is called cost of goods sold. Now cost of goods sold is a type of an expense account. It is the rarity of expense accounts and that it doesn't actually list the word expense in it. Um, and so we would increase it the same way we do an expense. In this case, your entry would be cost of goods sold, would be a debit for $5,000, and inventory would be your credit for $5,000. Uh, then we move to the next one where XYZ actually is going to pay the freight for $50. Being that we are selling these goods, freight is actually going to be an expense. And that is going to be a selling expense for us. Um, it's called different things. It can be called freight out. It can be called freight expense. Um, those are just some of the terminologies that you will see um, in different places. So we do have this selling expense, which is a freight expense. Um, it is on June 1st, and we are paying $50. So keyword here, paid, means cash. Cash is going out. It means it's on the bottom as our credit account. Um, and so this does differ from when we actually purchased the supplies and it was part of our inventory. This is where we're selling something, so it's part of a selling expense, and you would use the freight out or freight expense. Here, XYZ had $700 of merchandise returned, which cost them $400. So if merchandise is returned, we have to really look at reversing um, that sale. And the way we reverse a sale is it no longer is in part of our accounts receivable, but it's been returned. So I will use an account called the sales returns and allowance account. Um, now that is normally abbreviated as the sales R and A is how you will see um, that abbreviated out. And so they had $700 returned. And so that would be part of that sales returns and allowance account. 
and the other side of this would be to get take it out of that accounts receivable because we're no longer owed that money because they actually return that merchandise. Now, not only do I have to reverse that sale and put it into our sales returns account, I also need to put it back in inventory. So if I'm putting it back in inventory, that inventory account would be increased. And the amount that it would be increased is going to be the amount that it cost me and that would be the four hundred dollars so when I look at this amount here um, the inventory would increase by that four hundred dollars the other side of that is going to be that cost of goods sold account for that four hundred dollars um, and that would actually be in there also because it has to come out of our cost of goods sold um, and go back into our inventory account the next entry we see here is where we haven't had um, a customer actually return the merchandise. We allow them to keep the merchandise, but we gave them a credit for um, this merchandise. Um, so what it's saying is, is maybe they ordered blue and we sent them purple and they didn't want purple, but we said, hey, we'll knock $300 off of the cost if you just keep it and sell it. Um, is really what we're looking at here. So it's not going back into our inventory. The customer's keeping it. We're just giving them um, really a discount on it or an allowance on um, this amount. And so what you're going to see with um, this allowance is also going to go into that sales returns and allowance account for that $300 and they're not going to owe us that $300 anymore, so it's going to come out of that accounts receivable account. Now, with this one, since they're not returning the merchandise, we only have this one entry to make. Whenever we have a return of merchandise, then we have the two entries. We have to reverse the sale and put it back in inventory. Whenever we have the allowance, we just have to record that allowance um, entry. The next one we look at is XYZ receives payment for the June 1st transaction. What we have to look at is how much do they owe us? Because originally they owed us $11,000, but they returned $700 worth of merchandise. We gave them an allowance for $300 worth of merchandise. And so really what we're looking at um, here is that they really only owe us $10,000. Now they made this purchase on June 1st. It is now June 9th, so they are going to be paying it within the discount period, within that 10 days, and our terms were 110. So it is within the discount period of time. So what I would have to do is I need to take the $10,000, multiply it by that 1%, and that means that they have a discount of $100. So the amount that I'm actually going to receive in cash is going to be $9,900. So in this case, I'm receiving a payment. So cash is involved and cash is going up. So it will be on top as my debit. So I will have cash of $9,900. Um, I will have accounts receivable, and I have to get rid of the full $10,000 in accounts receivable. So you notice after I do that, I have zero balance there. My debits and my credits do not equal, though. I need another $100 right here in order for my debits and my credits to equal. And the account that I'm going to use um, here is going to be an account called Sales Discounts because I've offered this company a discount if they pay early. And so since they've paid early, then I have to book it as a sales discount. With sales, I always record those sales returns and allowances. I always record those sales discounts because I want to be able to go back as a manager and be able to see what's been returned, what, how many discounts have I given. I need that information. Um, on who is taking discounts and all of that. So that's why we do record those pieces of information. All right, so the next thing I'm looking at is um, on June 20th. What happens if they didn't pay me on um, 
on the 9th? What if they waited until the 20th to actually pay me? Then what journal entry would I have here? Well, I'd have to look at the fact that they um, currently owe me that $10,000. And so if they don't pay it before the discount period, they have to pay me that full amount. And so um, I would actually be receiving cash in in the total amount of $10,000. That's how much of a check I would receive in. And then their accounts receivable would be paid off. And so that would be the journal entry that I would have in this particular case. Um, one other thing I want to look at um, here is what would your income statement look like when we have these sales returns and allowances and sales discounts. And what you have to do um, on that top part, on the sales part of the statement, is you would actually have your sales. You would list those in total. So we had $11,000 in sales. Then you would say less the sales returns and allowances that we have. And the sales returns and allowances were at $700. Nope, sorry, one thousand dollars. Is that one thousand dollars? And then we have to take less our sales discount, and our sales discount was at one thousand dollars, and so that's going to give me a total of eleven $1 hundred dollars. And so what I would have here as my net sales amount is going to be $9,900. So that is what the top part would look like on a multi-step income statement, is we do have to come in and find that net sales amount. Um, after net sales, you would actually look at um, your cost of goods sold. Now your cost of goods sold from these particular entries, if we go back and we look at this, um, you're going to look and see that to start out with, for our cost of goods sold, we had $5,000 in cost of goods sold. And then when we get over here, we had the $5,000, and then we had that return of $400. And so our cost of goods sold is going to be at $4,600 would be our cost of goods sold. So when we get ready to look at that multi-step income statement, we would come in and, it's not the end there, we would come in and put this cost of goods sold at that $4,600, and what that would give us is a gross profit number, and our gross profit number would be at $53,000. Dollars, um, And so we would have that gross profit there. Um, this is just that top part of a multi-step income statement. You would then list all of your operating expenses after that. But I did want you to look and see part of the stuff as far as that multi-step income statement was concerned.